Welcome to Her Remarkable History. Remember, to support, please subscribe. The exploding body of Henry VIII. In today's society, we talk a lot about the Tudor dynasty and how it lasted nearly a century and a quarter. But something that is not often spoken about is the death of a certain king. Instead, we hear about how he was a tyrant, a man who had six wives, changed the face of religion, and a man who had a lot of people executed, including two of said wives. Henry came to power in 1509 after the death of his father. He wasn't to be king, but his elder brother passed away previously, meaning the line of succession fell to him. Henry initially was thought to have been a rather handsome man who was tall in stature with a very athletic body. He had a great ability for sport, such as horse riding and jousting, as well as being known for his strength. But when the time came for Henry's death, he was something of a shadow of the man he used to be. His waist had more than doubled in size, measuring a staggering 53 inches, and as he declined in health, his physical appearance also diminished. Some would even say that Henry's failing appearance and his short temper went hand in hand with the fate of his wives. In today's video, we are looking at the fate of the once King of England and especially what happened upon his death on the 28th of January 1547. Henry left behind an England that was so very different to what he ascended the throne to. England was a changed nation in many senses, especially regarding the fate of the church. Henry VIII made his mark on the country and today he's remembered as England's most famous king. However, join us today as we look at the death of Henry VIII, as well as the shocking events that followed, specifically how Henry's body exploded. And remember, to support our channel, please make sure to subscribe. Henry VIII's death was one that greatly shocked England, despite causing huge issues within his kingdom. With the English Reformation, many across England greatly liked the infamous six-wived king. He had forced through huge religious change that shaped England forever, and these religious divisions continued throughout the reign of not just the Tudor monarchs, but also the later Stuart monarchs. Henry VIII himself is known for also being a man who was colossal in his size, brought about following a jousting accident that caused him a lot of discomfort in his later life. Henry was knocked out in this accident, and he was never quite the same afterwards. He suffered from gout, and in his later years, his size went up to a 54-inch waist, and with every banquet that the royal court would host, he became increasingly depressive and suffered with mood swings. However, in the January of 1547, at the age of 55, King Henry VIII died at the Palace of Whitehall. His obesity is thought to have hastened his death, and the elaborate funeral plans for the king were made. Now the day before Henry died, he saw his confessor and he received Holy Communion. Death was imminent and all those around him could see it. But the doctors did not have the courage to tell Henry this. You see, predicting the king's death was treason and it could have resulted in execution. This was left to Sir Anthony Denny a gentleman of the Privy Chamber, who bravely, on the 27th of January, told Henry that, in man's judgment you are not like to live, and that he should remember his sins as every good Christian man should do. Henry responded with, the mercy of Christ is able to pardon me all of my sins. Yes, through they were greater than they be. It was on his deathbed that Henry then realised that he had committed many heinous and sinful acts in his life, especially, but not limited to, the executions in which would make his reign famous. It's not exactly known how many people were executed by order of this king. However, some estimates even suggest that it could have been around 72,000 people that were killed at the behest of the notorious King Henry VIII. The second half of Henry's reign is mostly categorised by the execution of wives, relatives, close friends and confidants and powerful nobles. He had even ordered the death around a week earlier of his last victim, Henry Howard, the Earl of Surrey. Now because of this, Henry's last known words and orders were to summon Archbishop Thomas Cranmer to his side, 
Denny asked the king whether he wanted any learned man to speak with, and the king responded that he should get Cranmer to be by his side. He then went into a sleep, and after this he would consult with the archbishop. Cranmer was sent for, but it took hours for him to make his way to the palace on the frozen roads. Cranmer arrived after midnight on the 28th of January, and made his way to the king's bedside. However, Henry was in his last few hours and beyond talking. He was barely conscious. Henry's last moments have been described as at the end there was no master and servant, no prince and churchman, just a priest preparing a departing soul for eternity. Cranmer begged Henry to give him a sign that he trusted Christ for salvation, and in response he felt a grip on his hand tighten slightly. It was an evangelical departure. No anointing, no reading of Latin prayers, just a simple acknowledgement of the all-sufficient atoning work of Christ. Cranmer would have been glad of that. Shortly afterwards, at around 2am, King Henry VIII died. His exact cause of death remains uncertain. However, it's believed to have been a pulmonary embolism, or renal and liver failure. It's been recorded mostly, though, how Henry died from natural causes. When Henry died, his death was kept secret for a number of days, whilst his counsellors made political power plays, and it was three days later until the embalmers were let in to tend to the king's body. Now, usually during the Tudor period, funerals were held a month after the death, and the internal organs were removed, and the body would have been stuffed with sawdust and herbs. The body was then wrapped in a wax-coated cloth and then sealed inside a lead case before being placed inside a coffin. Henry's funeral took place two weeks after his death because the need to bury a king was quite urgent. You see, the embalmers did their best job to preserve the king, but decay had already set in. Now, Henry VIII's body was en route to Windsor for the funeral. However, the cortege stopped overnight at Sion Abbey, and it's here where the rumours as to what happened to the royal corpse emerged. It was alleged that one night his coffin was opened, and part of the king's body was mauled by dogs kept at the abbey. However, another rumour is that King Henry VIII's body exploded within the coffin, and the Tudor king's coffin began to leak out the king's insides, and that they dripped out onto the floor, which may have then been picked up by said dogs, who licked up the blood. When Henry VIII's coffin was discovered to allow the coffin of Charles I to be placed in the vault, it was found that the wooden coffin, and also the internal lead structure, was severely damaged, and in credence to the theory that King Henry VIII's body did indeed explode. Thank you for watching, and to support, please subscribe to Her Remarkable History. Thank you.